Onchan, good morning, good afternoon. You're based in, in, in Seoul, South Korea, so it's, it's afternoon for you, right? Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm from Seoul, Korea, and nice to meet you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really an honor. Uh, um, I mean, your work, uh, your whole, you know, story as a photographer, it's, it's really inspiring. You have, you have gone through so many different phases, you know, yeah. in your career. And, and today you are being exhibited all around the world. Um, I don't even know where to start, you know, this conversation because you have done so much, uh, mm -hmm. T tell me about the very beginnings, because the beginnings were very interesting. You were actually studying business administration, right? Yeah. At the very beginning. Right. W what happened? What happened? Today you are a, a world-renowned photographer. Yes, I studied business administration. But as a child, I always dreamed of becoming an artist, painter, or graphic designer. But I never dreamed to become a photographer. But anyway, I was very interested in painting. And, uh, but during early 1970, my parents didn't want me to go to art school because in Korea they thought I will be very hungry and very difficult to survive. So they uh, pushed me to go to business school. But after I finished my degree and I started uh, at an export company, uh, just several months, but I found it's not for me for the whole life. So I escaped to abroad, and that was Germany, Hamburg. And then in Hamburg, I had a chance to start, you know, Fachhochschule für Gestaltung. And I tested many uh, art subjects, painting or printing technique, and also photography. But photography especially uh, I love it very much and I like spontaneous uh, capturing the images so slowly I became a photographer <laughs> so when you are you know being small be, being a, a teenager right you said you already felt uh, this urge to to create you were interested in photography painting you know w what was it do you think what what were the reasons inside you that uh, okay. this fascination what, what what was so fascinating for you about observing creating and you were also collecting yes i read very interested in collecting something uh you know i think it started because of my childhood i'm in i'm from the family three sons and three daughters and i'm the fifth and I was very lonely as a child. And as you could imagine, six children and my mother and father was very busy. And also I was a little bit shy and introvert child. So I didn't, uh, I was not happy to go out and uh, play with the other children. So I spent most of my time to observe something around my environments, for example, looking at the plants or looking at some stones that I found after the rain because we didn't have asphalt and everything. When the rain came, uh, we could find some interesting stones or ceramic pieces. So something like that uh, inspired me a lot. And that kind of uh, experience, speaking with uh, uh, which could not speak, uh, on objects, it was a kind of a friend for me. And maybe it started like that. And then during my teenager, I was very fascinated with wonderfully printed uh, calendar pages or the wonderful painter's art book or magazine from abroad. When I get that kind of uh, anti printed matters, I'm just fascinated with the color and wonderful things. And also another thing is my father, uh, he was working for the uh, importing some fibers or wools from abroad and he dying and he sent to, he sell to another places. So as a child, I saw many uh, sample books from dyed fiber and the color mm -hmm. swatch, it was very 
uh, nice for me to look at wonderful color and texture. So I think mm. that kind of experience gave me a uh, kind of happiness and uh, uh, I could find which one is nice and texture or the color. So I became more fascinated with the color and shape and everything. Mm. So, so I, I can, I can uh, you know, relate very well to what you are exper- uh, you know, explaining about your childhood. So you, you basically created your own world, you know, you, your own fascination. I was myself extremely shy, shy boy, and, and I went into, into music and also mm-hmm. in some and reading. Really? Uh, it's fascinating. Did, did your parents at that time, or, you know, your family, did they start noticing this, that you are interested mm-hmm. in those things? Yes, but uh, you know, uh, my this kind of habits collecting or fascinating with some of not so important objects, but it they always uh, scold me. I sh- you should throw <laughs> it away. In our house, there is no place to do to keep one. <laughs> so you know, uh, you know, it's not a big house and six children, and also my aunts live together at the time during early 60s so there was not enough my space my own corner there is no so some kind of uh, cookie boxes or when i i kept some of my interesting object but always it was a uh, kind of uh, you know uh, they uh, discarded it immediately when i it. <laughs> so did did, did you find some place somewhere else where you were storing those? <laughs> I tried every time. It was difficult. But, you know, because of that during childhood, teenager and until university time students, I was not, uh, you know, confident with my talent, with my sensibility. It was, it was something that I should hide it. So uh, I act as if I'm as normal not so sensitive <laughs> with every oh, yeah. things, but yeah. really, as I explained, as I went to Germany and started uh, at, in the school, I really uh, realized what I felt and what I have different talent. Uh, it's really very wonderful experience that the mm-hmm. professor or my students, friends, yeah. they, uh, happy with my artworks. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember you mentioning in another, you know, interviews maybe um, that especially at that time when you were growing up, it is, yeah. uh, you know, sensitivity and, you know, mm. uh, those kind of emotions were kind of something not to be so open or almost like ashamed about in Korea at the time in the mentality of the society. Sure. It's, it's, why was it so? What, what do you think? Mm-hmm. What was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Korea, uh, very conventional, and uh, at the time, the boys should play always balls and go out and more uh, active and more uh, moving. But uh, at house, in the house, just play with the paper or the crayon, and it's not the way the boy should do at the time. Now maybe it changed, and then more parents could understand different mm-hmm. talent, different uh, mentality. But at the time, you know, childhood and university, somebody so shy student is always kind of, you know, make a joke, they play with me. And then mm-hmm. uh, for me, it was better not to go to school. Sometimes I thought about that, but really after I found uh, what I could do in my, my life as a Photographer was one of my talent I found at the time first. So at, after that, I got a confident and okay, everything is okay. When I could uh, show what I can do in my life, uh, that's really enough. And I'm so happy. I felt like reborn. Mm-hmm. So so this, this transformation, this, you know, uh, this opening happened mm-hmm. happened mainly after you went to Germany and, and kind of uh, uh, encountered this different culture, different people? Did it yeah. happen? That's right. So 
I felt like felt like I have a wing in Germany. Uh, before I didn't know what to do in my life. What's the worst things that I could do? I didn't know. I was not confident enough, uh, and not I'm not so useless as a salesman, uh, as uh, some other businessmen. But mm -hmm. finally, in Germany, I really felt like uh, I found something I I should pursue it. I should work on mm -hmm. my life. So I really appreciate that all the uh, yeah, yeah. and friends. It happens often in many people's life, you know, that exactly that there is this one specific person, maybe you know, who mm -hmm. who meant or means so much in our life, who who showed us, you know, the turn in the life, mm -hmm. you know, way. Was there one specific person in Germany that you really had conversations with that 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 opened you up, or you know, or, or confirmed that this is the thing that that's you? That's what you should uh, be doing. Was there this one person? I think uh, it was not only one person. Maybe the environment, the the school, how they respond with my works and re respond with my attitude. Uh, I think first it was in general uh, very welcomed anyway. So in Hamburg, is uh, my school time. It was already very nice. But another thing is, if I could explain, I met another uh, photographer in Germany. Uh, his name is Andre Gelbke. He was very established photographer at the time. And, you know, I became more, you know, I did many, my style of photography. In the beginning, I did more city snapshots uh, on the street. I followed, you know, Cartier Bresson style or William Klein and fascinated with Western style. And as I met him, uh, you know, because in the school I was not happy enough, I thought there must be something I could do more, more than just carrying the camera and then shoot just what I encountering. But mm -hmm. uh, so I just, uh, you know, a bookshop, I found a wonderful book of Andre Gerfke. And I try to call him up and then explain I'm a student from Korea. And before I go back to Korea, I would like to show my works and get the critics from him. So he was very, I did. So, so you, you were not so shy anymore at this point. You took yeah. the fall and you co uh, probably it costed you a lot of courage. <laughs> After I got the confidence as a, you know, art student, mm -hmm. a more, at least, other things I still shy, but at least with the visual things, with camera mm -hmm. or painting, I got more confident and I tried to call him up. So he was very uh, generous and asked me to come. And what's so nice is he mentioned that what you have done is nice, uh, but he could not recognize it's from Korean student. It's okay. something like Western style and Western photographer. So you should find your own way. Uh, you should explain your, what you explain, experience as a photographer, uh, as a Korean student. Mm -hmm. So that was very touching uh, sentence. I never heard that kind of uh, wonderful indication from the professor in Hamburg. So what I needed was maybe that point that I'm a mm -hmm. Korean student and I don't need to follow just what the Western photographer did just as they did. So really that was my turning point for me as an artist. Mm. So I think we, we found the person, right? Yeah, yeah. Speak. Yeah. <laughs> I have a good, uh, you know, relation with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you were in Germany for, uh, was it, uh, Six, seven years? Six years. Six years. Um, you said you were shooting mainly, you know, street photography at that time. Yes, right? first. And then also, sadly, I like uh, still life. I did some of still life and street photography. But after I met Andre Gelfke, I tried to find 
what is more important for me than wonderful, you know, harmonized frame? I mean, wonderful gestalt, um, wonderful. not anymore, not just wonderful, uh, well designed, well focused, but I try to feel even when it's not so uh, sharp enough, even it's not uh, perfect, or the frame is a little bit, uh, when I can say in German, wackelig, some not so perfect. Okay. In there. But, uh, you know, sometimes when I could feel it's more emotional, that's what I felt at that moment. Then I now have a, a courage that I could pick up then uh, then that's wonderful, beautiful future. Okay, so but then after this period in Germany, you still decide to come back to Korea, right? Yes. To the place where, where originally it was a little, little bit more difficult for you to, to, to express yourself. So you are coming back to Korea with these experiences from, from Germany, from Europe. Yes. And you apply them because you start documenting what's happening in, in Seoul, right? Yes, well, I do. So this is a, tell us about this moment. It was a great moment just uh, uh, with the Olympics coming up and the Seoul Korea changing. And you have this amazing, um, uh, great uh, series, the yeah, clandestine pursuit in the, yeah, right. the, which is being exhibited now for the first time. I just book uh, w w went out, right? So what happened in Korea? How did you apply okay. what you learned in Germany back in Korea? That's right. Uh, after I came back to Korea, you know, in Germany, I couldn't stay anyway. It was very difficult. Uh, okay. Was of the... <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, you know, my father supported me and I would like to come back and anyway, try to, you know, dash again here. But first as I came back, you know, I didn't have any base as a artist in Korea. I should start from the zero, and it was very difficult as a financially and also as a photographer. Nobody recognized me as a well photographed, a well wonderful photographer. So I should start start from zero, and also Korea was at the time dictator time. So until 1988, 89, you know, when I came back, I lost my passport. I couldn't go abroad. You know, in oh, Korea, yeah. mm. only somebody who has a special reason to travel, he could get the passport and go abroad. So return, then passport invalid immediately. So, and the older regulation in the country, it's too much. It's totally different from what I experienced six years in Germany. So everything was free there, but here I should look at the policeman every time, every corner, and shooting also, it was not so easy because, because of censorship in mag and in the uh, newspaper, the people didn't like to be taken picture. And even in front of the building, uh, when I make a shooting in front of the building, the guide came out and please, give me the camera and something like that, very, very uh, difficult. So this kind of uh, atmosphere, but I would like to, as of, as of foreign eyes, you know, like as if I'm a foreigner, because I came back six years after, for me, I felt like a foreigner and everything what's going on in Korea was very fresh and interesting for me, although it was physical, uh, psychologically difficult mm -hmm. so to carry two camera, one black and white film when when slide, and I document both of them. So, so was it difficult to this extent that you you know on the streets when when walking the streets you had to basically did you have to hide the cameras and then quickly shoot or how did you how did you approach it? Yeah, not hide, but the frontal face or something was difficult. So okay. most of my pictures maybe from behind or very quick snapshot. 
So yeah, let, let, let's look at one photograph because I have one photograph selected. Okay. This okay. Let me try and uh, sharing the screen. You should see it. Uh, let me see. Um, can you see it? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so I, this is a. I love this picture for for many reasons, but <laughs> okay. I see exactly this. This is probably a quick snapshot, not into the face, right? Of the right. moment, uh, but it has this very strong feeling and you know it actually really captures and and tells me a little bit about wh how the streets were in korea that those times was it the kind of photography you were doing these days yeah i just uh, you know uh try to catch the images very spontaneously i didn't mean it should be very well focused uh for me the encountering was in uh, very important, and in this case, a, a girl carried the eggs. Mm -hmm. Could you find it? It's as eggs, but we didn't have at the time kind of wonderful package. And she bought some of eggs, and in a vinyl uh, tute, in a vinyl bag. So for me, I think in Korea, egg was very, very, you know, expensive. Not everybody could afford eating egg. Uh, so maybe she carry very carefully. And for me, the symbol of egg is also some of different important meaning. So I kept captured the images very spontaneously on the street. Mm -hmm. And when, 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 you know, taking those photographs on the streets of Seoul, it was uh, 1980s, right? 80. Yeah, 85, 87. No. You said the censorship was strong, so I imagine you couldn't really show them back then mm -hmm. anywhere. So where you, what was your intention when creating those images? You knew you were keeping them for the future to show to show it to the next generations, how, the, how Korea was back then. Was it your primarily primary intent when, when, when doing this? Uh, but, uh, you know, censorship is only uh, not every casual daily life images. It will be okay. Only when against the, uh, you know... Yeah, the dictatorship. Yeah, dictatorship, then will be problem for the magazine or for, right. for private reason is okay. And as you know, in Korea at the time, no gallery was interested in street photography. Uh, so like this style, there was not an even gallery. We didn't have enough gallery, just one or two. And the gallery handling more landscape or very uh, you know, beautiful images, not this kind of distracting images. So uh, I just did for myself. And we had some kind of a uh, group of photographer, we made a kind of magazine for ourselves. Through the magazine, I introduced my work. So some of the younger generation who started photography at the time, uh, they were very fascinated with my black and white images because mm -hmm. Korea, uh, not, nobody tried this kind of style, uh, like a spontaneous and more... Uh, emotional from inside. So observing the city like with the distance, uh, I think there were no photographer like that. So mm. uh, although I couldn't publish any book at the time or I didn't do any big exhibition, but with the sum of a small group of photographer, I was happy to communicate. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, now, so let's jump some some years, you know, <laughs> forwards. Uh, the street photography style, you know, the, the snapshot, the the moment, the second, you know, reacting very quickly to situations. Today, yes. you are very much known for for your still life images, for the vessels, for the soaps, for you know, yeah. this kind of projects. What what started happening? When did you 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 mentioned? being interested in still life already as a, as a young boy yeah. in some way. So it was somewhere there in the background, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but why this transition in your photographic life and career? So 
Was this street getting too busy for you and you started looking for some serenity and, and quietness? Is it somewhere there along those lines? Mm. Uh, street photography, you know, Korea changed uh, after the Korea, uh, Olympic game. Early 1990, uh, you know, although the censorship and the dictatorship finished, but what was uh, not so interesting is every city became the same because Korea uh, developed a little bit. So every shops or the building decorated the same way. When Seoul make uh, this kind of uh, facade, then another small city, village, they changed. So for me, it became not so interesting uh, for my eyes because it's mm. too much uh, same, <laughs> same style, not so unique. As I started the street photography in Korea, it was kind of, there was kind of a uh, confrontation of uh, modern and uh, new, old and something mixed. So it was very interesting for me what was left, but uh, it was just starting constructing newly. So it was very interesting, but early 1990, so I lost slowly the idea. And also uh, with the, some of, uh, gal I started with working with the gallery and then, uh, you know, expectation of gallery also different. So my theme also changed. And also what was very important turning point was uh, my father's death, uh, 1996, he died. And shortly before his death, I made a series of uh, breaths. And uh, as he died, after he died, uh, my interest on the, what was going on in daily life, a little bit uh, I got a distance. And I'm interested in more nature and ocean and uh, meditative images. And this kind of meditative images slowly move to the emptiness and move to quietness. And then I try to make uh, more quiet images. And also, uh, you know, my vessel series is especially one of Korean wonderful, uh, you know, cultural heritage. So as a photographer, I would like to, uh, you know, present with my photographic eyes in different way, some kind of hidden, hidden, you know, value or hidden uh, beauty, I would like to show up with my eyes. That was my yeah. I will bring up one example here. So from the Vessel series, images of, you know, co Korean ceramics, uh, you, you are visiting uh, different museums around the world, right? And, and, and finding those pieces and, uh, and photographing them. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to ask you, you know, Exactly, especially after these periods of, of, of your active, you know, and busy street photography. Um, what are you experiencing in those moments when, when you know, being there with those vessels and uh, what are you kind of trying to transmit, to, to portray, to, to convey okay. direction, yeah. right? So what's the, at the core of, the, okay. at, of, of your fascination here? Anyway, the street photography time was 1988 or 87. So I started this series 2004. So almost uh, it's 17 years past, uh, I think so. So it was two decades almost. So my life changed. And, you know, what I started with this one is there was many reasons. But in Korea, this uh, white vessel was very popular during Joseon dynasty between 15th century until 19th century. We were with the philosophy of uh, uh, Confucianism. So during that time, Joseon period, uh, they loved the simplicity and uh, no design and very pure, uh, quite simple images. So, but before 
was the Korea dynasty. We loved the blue Seladon. And Korean you know, government always uh, was proud of blue Seladon until 2004 5, before I started with this series. But for me, blue Seladon itself has a wonderful shape and line and pattern. It's it's like a fancy lady who has wonderful shape and wonderful, you know, faces. But this series of white porcelain, uh, as you see, it's very simple and it doesn't have any, you know, for me, it's like a, a woman without cosmetic, uh, you know, uh, schminken, yeah. but makeup, yeah, makeup. Yeah. without makeup. So something like that is, you know, it touched me as a character. And as my childhood, for me, it looks like a group of uh, ceramics, which doesn't show up by himself, not so aggressive, not shouting, just quiet and sitting back like my childhood, so shy in the behind. So, and even these uh, vessels during the end of 19th century as Japanese occupied Korea, uh, it was scattered mainly in Japan, because Japanese love this simplicity. They collected a lot, but also through diplomats or through business, America and Wuzegime in Paris and so many places. So for me, I would like to bring back this, you know, isolated uh, vessels to Korea as a spirit. Well, Although they collected now in Japan, mostly, but I would like to capture the images and bring back to Korea again. So I tried to shoot without uh, strong shadows, very soft, soft light. And I used Korean uh, rice paper, uh, mulberry paper, so made it very soft. and. Uh, even with a 4x5-inch camera, I tried the very minimal uh, focus. So only some area is very well focused, but the other bottom area is out of focus. So with that, I would like to make it a little bit floating images. So quiet, floating, and that was my idea to show this series as if it's like a portrait of some group of Joseon Dynasty people. I uh, hope. This is, are, you, are you using here the, the artificial lighting or is it window light? Uh, artificial light, because you know in the museum, uh, as you know, it's a collection room, so I couldn't go near the window. But I always try to use the very indirect light very minimal light. So mm -hmm. although it could be a long exposure, I would like to use very minimal and soft. And so it looks like, a, you know, like a pencil drawing, mm -hmm. in black and white. All of those ceramics, those dishes, they are white, right? Yes, the white. And you decided to add the some, some pink light to some ah, of yeah. them? You left some of them in white. White, what, what about this? <laughs> okay. The pink is, uh, you know, like a flesh color. Uh, as I saw them, uh, you know, in Korea at the time, Joseon Dynasty, the ladies, uh, they couldn't go out in the street very easily. They hide their face with the uh, rock, uh, with the uh, skirts. And only special case they could go abroad. So as I first saw this white ceramic series, some of them reminds me a kind of group of females, chosen female, who couldn't go abroad very uh, vividly. And then I would like to show them as if it's a kind of group of females, so mm -hmm. soft and quietness and uh, maybe hiding themselves some secrets. So in another opposite way, the black and white, in Korea there was, uh, you know, scala, uh, a 
they use always the brush and then they study. And in black and white, I thought about uh, more brush drawing or brush writing and some kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the scholar groups. So two different versions I have. This is really fascinating. Thank you for for you know for, for explaining. Uh, I hope you never heard before. So it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah great great insight here. Yeah, thank you. And uh, is this series really closed, or are you still continuing with this particular? Uh, for me, actually, I've done a lot. So more than sixteen museums I visited and got the permission was the most important and difficult uh, mm. process. And now some of the uh, personal collectors or private collectors or the small museum, they ask me if I could make a series for them. So before I tried to get the permission, but now some of the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they ask me because uh, with my uh, way of shooting, it looks like it's a little bit totally different from what they have. So I would like to. When they ask me, I'm happy to work with them. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so it works in all possible ways. You see, it's it's wonderful. What? <laughs> uh, why do you think those images um, resonate with uh -huh. so many people? Not only in Korea, not only in Asia, but internationally. What 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 do you think it is about those images that you know? I think it uh, yes, especially Korean loves this one. Because in Korea, Joseon Dynasty, um, we didn't recognize the quiet beauty until now. And in Korea also, it's booming up very modern, simple, you know, uh, living spaces. So they want to have wonderful, simple images. So they love these images. And also it was lost during Japanese occupation in many countries, so they love to have this one. And But in abroad, in America or in Europe, I think uh, they could also feel this kind of, uh, you know, meditative images, very uh, quiet and also spacious, uh, just one simple vessels. Maybe it gives them kind of uh, okay, relaxing, uh, atmosphere, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because our busy day life, but quiet one vessel or two vessels, it's like uh, as they waiting for you uh, when you have these images. So I think, I hope they also dialogue with them by yeah. themselves. No, definitely, no. So the, the world out out there, it's so crazy. So we need those yeah. moments, right? Of yes. Yeah slowing down, just taking some minutes, you know, spending time with an object just quietly. So I think uh, wonderful work. Yeah. Uh, Bonchan, let's look at because I, I, I am aware of your time. You are busy, busy man these days. <laughs> um, I have just, let's, let's go through them, you know, quicker. I have three more images from different three series. More. Okay. Uh, Explain something uh, more. This one is soap. So it's a similar yeah. series. Tell me, Similar series. Uh, did you work on this series before the vessels or in parallel? Uh, before, almost parallel, but uh, before. I may just uh, began to, you know, found the beauty of the old uh, soaps, rest of the soaps. Uh, you know, soap, uh, before they disappeared, it gets some wrinkles and some, you know, pavements and the traces of time. I love always the traces of time. So it's like traces of traces. So I collected many of these uh, uh, small soaps. And, you know, for me, the surface of the soaps, especially the white one, it also has a relate relation with the, you know, a vessel's surface. You know, mm -hmm. the surface it used during 100 or 200 years uh, or the, with the dirt or the, with the hand touch, it has some kind of, uh, you know, traces of time. So similar way, but in 
a soap is, you know, especially it's beautiful color. And I also tried, as I found the beauty of the soaps, not only white soaps, but I tried to mix a uh, different variety of colors. So uh, for me, uh, it's like a, my diary, you know, most of soaps is used by me, by myself. <laughs> I, was a, I was about to ask you, because you said you collected those soaps, I was about to ask you maybe the ones you used or were some restaurants suddenly noticing that the soaps were disappearing from their bathrooms. You know? yeah. Sometimes when I go in a cafe, uh, I also stole some of your soaps. <laughs> okay, I will be reporting it up there. <laughs> No, I think it's a brilliant idea, Wond wonderful, and also with the with the thought, you know, behind it. I, I love this about your work because there is always this, you know, underlying thought or you know a reflection. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just such a strong impact. Okay, let's look at, at, at one more different image. Uh, tell me about this one. What's hap what what's happening here? Yeah, it was uh, shot in Paris. Uh, it was in front of the supermarket, actually. I didn't made it. Uh, I didn't made it, uh, make it. So on the street, I, I found this, somebody when we fell down the glass, I mean, bottle of the wine or a bottle of uh, some of uh, oil. So it was very shocking, but I love this spontaneous, you know, like a painting like a Jackson Pollock's painting on the street. So I immediately captured the images. So still I kept on, kept on going on, shooting all the variety of images on the street or in the magazine. It inspired me a lot. This, ca it, this cannot be maybe just one series, but always this kind of images on the street. I keep on walking with the title of incognito, so me as an anonymous, anonymous uh, person on the street mm -hmm. behind somebody, uh, like a uh, clandestine portrait in the long afternoon, same series, maybe I could say I'm continuing observing the uh, world and my environment, and this could be later on maybe in one of the series, but I like to see and react with this kind of uh, many mm -hmm. visual things. Yesterday I listened to a, I guess it was a podcast um, yeah. of, you know, where, where, where someone was talking about, you know, the topic of the, of the, it was not a conversation, it was a, um, you know, one person sharing his thoughts. The topic was, why do we like to photograph beauty? Um, and, you know, and I, I listen to the podcast and I, I have my, my own thoughts on, on this topic because I also like capturing such images mm. which which are not necessarily by the you know standard definition of the word beautiful, but for me they are. And I have the feeling for you as well. I have the feeling for you this kind of uh, objects, situations, mm. uh, situations, strange parts are, are, are beautiful, aren't they? Sure, sure. It's a like an actual painting, as I told you. It's a, it's very you know cruel. It's it looks like it, it reminds, maybe, could be a some blood. Yeah, somebody had an accident. It reminds in a bad situation, but also it has a very spontaneous power for me. So it's a beautiful but very cruelty together. Mm. It, it's just a supermarket scene, but I could imagine maybe with this one, Ukraine war or the now uh, Gaza area, it hurts me always. I, I don't shoot just the beautiful scene. All this scenery, what's going on in the world also, I observe all the information and what the human being, you know, give. Mm -hmm. When, when, when you when you notice when you notice an object or you know like this, yes, those thoughts, you know those broader thoughts, those connections, like you said yeah. now to humanity, to to the problems of the world, yeah. Do they? Uh, 
I guess I'm trying to ask. You react to those thoughts because you think about those things a lot in your, you know, life, daily life, mm. or you attach those higher thoughts to 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 this scene later, or you already feel it in the moment when you when you notice this this broken bottle. I think immediately, you know, it's, it's really like a blitz. It's I there is no time, you know, shooting is just you know, 125 seconds. Mm. It's so immediate, spontaneous. So I think there must be no time to think and calculating. It's a emotionally spontaneous. But after maybe I look at the images, I should relate what I have done, what I shot. Maybe it's really has a relation with uh, that kind of scenery. I think uh, at just at that moment, uh, situation, I think there is no moment of thinking and calculating, oh, it could be related, something like that, something like that. It's just maybe in my body, I think, what I exactly. hope, what was. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, from my. Somewhere down there. It's, it's there, it's just, it's just manifesting itself in this, yeah, yeah. this military. When they yeah. don't have that kind of imagine or that kind of, you know, Thinking yeah. of what, what was going on in the world, uh, maybe war or climate. When I didn't think about that kind of uh, ideas, I think I would not respond with it. I think mm. the main reason that I respond with this, oh, I could pass by, oh, what is it? Just without shooting, I could go just pass by. But at least I react immediately and I would not, uh, lost, lose that images. It means I think always in my mind or in my uh, idea, I observed all this what was going on together. Not only my studio still life. So I react and I capture the images. And someday I could make this series in you know, a my series uh, to talk to communicate with other persons. Last photograph. Okay. Ah, yeah. It's good. <laughs> this is from the series Portraits of Time. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at here? I'm not sure. Is it water? Is it a, it's an ocean landscape or not? Yeah, it reminds you, I'm sure it could be a sea horizon or the landscape, uh, wide uh, field or something like that. But it's really very flat war with the dirt, with the dust on war. So, you know, as I explained, after my father's death, I didn't know what to do. A little bit, two, three years, I didn't shoot any nice pictures. I didn't find any nice theme. I was, because before my father's death, I was trying to show very strong images and, uh, uh, but, it was first time after my father's death that I encountered in Japan. I found this war in Japan, this old temple. And as I, as I saw that, suddenly I felt like, uh, like a drawing of uh, Leonardo da Vinci or some clouds or the landscape. Uh, but it was made by nature, it, but by time, the dust, because the war was not even so in mm. there some kind of uh, some up and down so there are some left of dust so as i found these images i was very happy it's like uh, another another turning point uh, uh maybe from now on i found another subject so meditative and more distance from the real life and I could I don't need to push the people to show directly in front of them their eyes before I tried to show direct this is what I want to show I tried to very push the images strong images but after that I tried okay uh, more distance 
and then let the people observe with more mm. uh, mm. space and then more time. So that was for me also important turning point. Now, oh, wonderful, Oncha. Thank you so much. I mean, I resonate, or you know, with the, with your work and with your story so much. Because I feel like um, you are this example of you know of an artist who your output, your images are just really a part of you who you are. You know, yeah. it's I really love it about you. I love it. It's not a, it's not necessarily like you know a preconception or you know it's not a, it's not deliberately it comes really from within all your life you know so it, it shows the face of your life and it's so connected to who you are inside your emotions your thoughts your experiences uh, that's why I'm convinced that's why the strong the, the work is as strong as it is you know so re Thank really you. congratulations and uh, um, so I imagine you being who you are you are always on the journey you are on the journey now do you feel yeah. already do you already feel where, where the journey is taking you next? Is there something appearing, something you're experimenting with? It's difficult to say our future, yeah? But really, as you say, I changed subjects and also express a way of expression. Uh, every step, how I changed and what I experienced, it also reflects my works. So I'm very happy. I, I didn't really just to follow what was going on in art market or art world or other photographer, what is more interesting. I just try to reflect what I felt. So that's true. But uh, from now on, you know, in the future, I could not uh, confidently say how it will be. But, uh, you know, I would like to do during my... Uh, retrospective show in Korea, uh, I found still there are some series that I want to finish. I don't want to make sure I should, I could do some more new works, but uh, I felt some of them uh, I didn't finish enough. So I would like to push the last uh, energies, uh, some of series to finish what I could do more and Without okay. to make every the whole, I get a whole. If they there are some more what I have done, I would like to fix. <laughs> if yeah. you could, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to be visiting the the, the show, the retrospective show yeah. in Seoul, you know, weeks so ago. So yeah, that you had a chance, so you could yeah. ask more uh, about my work. Absolutely, so impressed, so impressive, so, so wonderful. You know, to just be there and and see what. Uh, how deep you experiment with with all the visual, you know, uh, yeah, elements, you know, and uh, combining them. Wonderful, Bongjan. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we will stay in touch, and uh, I wish you all the best with with the upcoming, with fixing the holes, with the upcoming projects. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> okay, wait for my uh, work. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you so much.